Okay. Now, next step is to really find a, a, a small or really to simplify the algebra by finding a certain quantity of the force acting in the y direction. Now, as you can see, there are two forces, so we just basically want to resolve them. Okay. So taking the y direction as positive, so taking the y direction as positive, we want to find a small force in the y direction. Okay. So basically, it's just simply this one, take away this one over here because we're taking that direction as positive. So it's equals to P, take away partial P, partial Y, delta Y divided by 2, okay, delta X, delta Z, okay, minus that quantity over there because that quantity is, is going in the negative direction. So P, okay, plus delta, partial P, partial Y, delta Y, delta, divided by 2, okay, delta x, delta z. Okay, a lot of quantities there, but let's keep the mathematical rigor, shall we? So this, subtracted by this, what do we get? The pressure takes away the pressure, okay? The, this minus this, this would minus this one over here. So basically, we will get 2 partial p, partial y, delta y divided by 2, and then it will multiply by the delta x, delta z, as is common for both, and it's equals to the p cancels, okay? So we get Subtract partial p, partial y, delta y, delta x, delta z. Okay. My apologies. The two cancels, not the p. Okay. The partial p is still there. So the two cancels over here. So what is this quantity? This quantity is basically a small force acting in the y direction. Okay. Now if we were to do the same, okay, it would just the for the the x and the z direction. The small quantity of the force acting in the x direction is subtract partial p, partial x multiplied by delta x, delta y, delta z, and in the z direction is take away partial p, partial z in the, in the delta x, delta y, delta z. There we go. So now we got our three forces acting in the x, y, and z direction. Okay, quite good, quite nice, quite nice. Now, what is the next step? Okay, the next step is now, since we got these three forces, okay, it's quite interesting because now, these forces that are acting on the cube, we have summarized them into three di dimensions, so to speak, okay? And that is the, the x, the y, and the z. Now, what we want to do is we want to find a single vector force, okay, that's, that really lumps these three together, okay? Well, that is quite easy to do because what do we know? We know that the y direction is in the j component, the x direction is in the i component, the z component is in the k component. So what we can write is that a small vector force Okay, a small vector force acting on this water particle is would be simply okay delta f x okay knowing that these are scalar okay because they are scalar because we only take into account the pressure okay multiplied by the i component does that make sense so it will be the small force acting in the x direction multiplied by the i component plus the delta the delta force in the y component i uh, sorry in the y direction multiplied by the j component plus delta f z in the k component okay yeah this will give us the one over here and now we will equal to replacing all um substituting all these equations inside factorizing out the, the delta x delta y delta z because they're common for all three we would get okay minus okay partial p partial x i plus partial p partial y j plus partial p partial z k close bracket delta x delta y delta z there we go i'm just basically factorizing out this three the, the, the delta x delta y delta z or in other words the volume for now and just writing this in this form over here like that okay you can check the written lesson if you're, you're quite confused by just simply substituting and factorizing out okay now what do we know about vector differential calculus okay ijk components okay partial p Partial x, partial p, partial y, partial p, partial z. Knowing that p is the, the, the pressure at the center. Okay. This will take the form of the vector form of the pressure gradient. Does that make sense? And what is the vector form of the pressure gradient? Okay. Pressure gradient starts out as a scalar quantity, right? Now, what do we know about the del operator in vector differential calculus? The del operator turns a scalar quantity to a vector quantity. This is the vector quantity over here, ijk component, right? The pressure is the scalar, scalar quantity or the scalar function. We're going to implement the del operator to the scalar function of the pressure. Okay. 
Okay, and then again, uh, multiply by x, y, and z. Okay, now their operator, okay, some, some uses of it, okay, if you are, you are not too familiar, okay, it's going from scalar all the way to vector, okay, it will just turn a scalar quantity into a vector quantity. A full anal analysis, analysis of it, you can check my previous videos, but that's what the their operator does. So, we will apply the del operator to the scalar function of the pressure to get the vector form, right? The vector form is over here. So, basically, the scalar form is, if we denote it as P, is basically the del operator uh, using on the, the scalar form P. And that is what we write over here, okay, the del operator, like so. So, okay, analysis is almost done, but we still got to resolve the forces using Newton's second law, taking into account direction. Why do I say taking into account direction? Well, because this is a small force, right? The force is a certain direction, okay? So, the summation of the forces, okay, implementing Newton's second law is the mass times the acceleration, okay? The mass times acceleration. We are implementing this, acceleration has a direction also. We are implementing this on the water particle over here. Now, what is the, the summation of the forces? Well, the summation of the forces is simply the small vector, the small force, the small vector force on that one particle subtract by, okay, a small weight in the k direction, okay? Why? Because we are now introducing the second force. Remember, the, the second force that we need is the force due to gravity, and that is the weight, the small weight of this in the k component, which is going down, that's why it's minus, okay? Multiplied by the mass, and multiplied by acceleration, okay? Now, we'll go from here to write this one over here, subtract the del operator on the pressure field, okay? Pressure field, x, y, z, okay? Take away the weight, what can we say about the weight? Isn't the weight the specific weight multiplied by x, y and z, right? x, y, and z is the volume, okay, we multiply by the specific weight, is that the weight per unit volume, okay, acting in the k component, okay? Now, mass, what do we know about the mass? The mass is the density multiplied by the x, uh, delta x, delta y, delta z, the, the volume again, lastly, acceleration, okay? We're almost done, hang in with me, okay? We're almost done, okay? So now, we have this one over here, we can cancel off this, we can cancel off this, and we can cancel off this. So finally, our basic equation of the pressure field would be minus the del operator on the pressure field, okay? Take away the specific weight in the K component equals to the density and the acceleration, okay? And there we go, my friends. The basic equation of the pressure field. Now, at this point of time, you may be looking at that and, whoa, how the heck am I gonna use that? Well, we're gonna see in the future, in the future, because what this does is, is that's why we call it a basic equation. It's the basic equation. What do we know about the fluids? Fluids we can split into a lot of types: um, static, okay, dynamic, and there's also like compressible, compressible, and incompressible. Uh, linear density, non-linear density. See, there are a lot of types of fluids in the fluid mechanics world. So we really need a basic equation of the pressure field. This is the basic equation that we have. So, if we want to analyze static, what we do is that we just let A equals to zero. That, that is what we normally do in our analysis. But, for all the different kinds of fluids, this is the equation that we will start out with. The basic equation of the pressure field, and that's why it's good to know. Okay, so that, that's it. Okay, a long analysis, resolving forces, implementing Newton's second law, okay, using the del operator, and this is the equation that we have. And we're going to move on to analyze the different liquids, okay, and see how we will start off from this equation, okay? So I hope you enjoyed. I know it's a long presentation, but I'm trying to do my best here for Gaussian Man, okay? Thanks.